joining us. Um, we're going to start with Rebecca from Sky. Great, thanks ever so much. Um, hi, Roy. First of all, great win. You must be pretty pleased with that performance. Yes, I am very pleased because we played against a good team. It was always going to be a, a tough opening fixture for us, but I'm really pleased about the way we approached it and the the determination and the resilience that we, we showed throughout the game to make certain that we didn't concede again after taking the lead, although I would have to take my hat off to our goalkeeper for making what I thought was a fantastic save midway through the second half from, from Danny Ings, which quite easily could have cost us two of the points, but very happy to get off to a start with a victory against a team like Southampton and, and their quality. Good opener from Wilfred Zaha. Of course, his second goal was disallowed. Um, what did you make of that? Well, I've got to be honest. From the from you know, from your position on the bench, you find it very very hard to, to, to make the correct decisions. I, I would have thought it probably quite difficult for the linesman and ref to make a decision because having seen it back and seen the VAR lines, it was actually very very close. It didn't look close to me during the game I would have thought whoops they're going to disallow that because it's offside but then when you see the VAR lines you realise actually we've been a bit unlucky there because he's only marginally offside and you know we could have got away with it but uh, the referee made the right decision on both occasions when VAR was involved the red card happy that he rescinded that not happy that he didn't give the offside goal but understanding why he didn't do you think it's good that we're starting to see referees go and use the pitch side monitors? Is that a positive step in the AR? I'm not sure. I mean, I'm, I'm, I have mixed feelings. I mean, I think that it's bad enough in some ways that you have a referee on the field and we're, we're, de we're debating his <laughs> ability to make the right decision. So we go to a studio and we hand it over to another set of referees and then they obviously don't feel certain they can make the decision either, so they hand it back to the on-field referee. But I don't quite know how they're, how they're communicating, how they're relating. It could well be that the studio is saying, look, I think you might have got that wrong. Why don't you look at this? And then sending the referee over. If that's the way it's working, I can understand it. And certainly today, I thought for the decisions that were crucial in the game, uh, the referee got both decisions right. Do you think he will stay at Crystal Palace this season? Well, we hope so. I mean, the fact is, every transfer window I've been involved in, we offers made noises that he would perhaps like to play for a club, <coughs> pardon me, a club that can offer him Champions League football and maybe a step up in his career because he's given a, a large part of his career to us and we're grateful for it. But for anything to happen, that club's got to come along and, 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 and pay the market price. And until such time that happens, I'm just happy to continue working with Wilf and I'm expecting him to understand that we can't let him go until someone comes in and wants to buy him. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, um, wanted to ask you as well, are you worried about the number of injuries you've got so early on in the season, especially defensively? We haven't really picked many up from the start of the season. The only one really we picked up from the start of the season is the one that happened to us on Thursday with Jairo Riedeval, which was very unfortunate because he played all the pre-season games and was in line to start the game. All the other injuries are ones that we had when we, when we finished the season. Um, Connor Wickham came back and joined us for a while, but he'd been struggling with an injury at Sheffield Wednesday. Benteke was injured at the end of the season, as were all those defensive players. Worried... I'm concerned really how this group of players that I think have done so well for me, this 11 that play today and the couple of substitutes, how they're going to be able to carry on if we get further injuries, which mean we've got to find substitutes for them. If you could guarantee me these guys are going to get through the next four games and we're going to have the same team as we've had today, I don't think it's a major problem, but I'm concerned that we don't have really enough bodies and enough quality behind us to cover any further injuries or suspension. Am I right in saying that your first game as a manager in the Premier League back in 1997 was a win against Southampton? Do you remember much of that? Yes, I remember the first game very well, but unfortunately it wasn't against Southampton. It was a 1-0 win against Derby County by old friend Jim Smith, who was the manager at Derby County at the time. So you're on the right track, but you've just... It was a 1-0 victory, but it wasn't Southampton, it was Derby. We'll blame the BBC. 
<laughs> Blame the BBC. No, yeah. My me- nothing ahead. wrong with my memory at the moment. Uh, looking ahead to the cup as well. Um, obviously, you're playing Bournemouth on Tuesday. How much of a threat do you think they're going to be? Obviously, newly relegated. They've lost a lot of their good players, you know, this season as well. Well, I mean, I think that they're still basically a Premiership side. I thought they were very unlucky to get relegated. It was so, so close. You know, that really was there, but for the grace of God go I. Uh, so, as far as I'm concerned, it's a, a fixture between two Premiership teams. My worry is that if I continue playing this same 11, am I going to be able to field them in the next Premier League game? So, somehow, I've got to find a way of giving some of these players a rest like most managers do in, in the English in the in the in the Carabao Cup without embarrassing ourselves. So that that's a dilemma which I will actually face and consider tomorrow, because at the moment I'm still rather happy to be considering the fact that we've won our opening game. Cool. Thanks ever so much. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. We'll go to James Savonda from TalkSport. Hi Roy, I want to ask you about your back four today because when you consider the amount of football Scott Dan's played in recent years, Koyate playing out of position and Tyrek Mitchell who's only just started playing professional football, you must be incredibly pleased with how they performed today. Absolutely, good observation. I think that the back four, which has you know, really propped us up towards the end of, of, of last season because to be honest we were still doing pretty much the same thing then. We didn't have James Tompkins, we didn't have Mamadou Sacco because he got injured against Aston Villa. Um, we didn't have Gary Cahill because he lost him in the Chelsea game. So these guys really came in towards the back end of the last season and that's not that long ago. And on top of that, of course, now they've had to go through this pre-season period and the four pre-season games that we've organised. So I really take my hats off to them. I think they've been quite fantastic. And the only problem is that we live to some extent on a knife edge because we know that we should have good competition for places in those areas and we should have plenty of players ready to come in and take the place of this back four if anything goes wrong. And we know that due to injuries, we don't have that. Psychologically, how important do you think today's victory was considering that it was quite a difficult end to the season, albeit a lot of that was due to the injuries you had as well? Yeah, there were lots of reasons why we had a bad end to the season, but the bottom line is that we never really lost faith. We never really lost confidence. We, we knew why things weren't going our way then and why one or two results were a little bit harsh on us. And we knew that we had the capacity and ability to turn that around. But certainly we were handed a, a, a tough fixture to start off with today, so I'm really pleased that we've come through it and start off with three points because as we all know in this league every time you get three points it's a it's a weight off your shoulders and it's a step forward in the right direction just finally for me Roy there's been so many injuries will any of these players that are currently out be available for next Saturday when you've got to go to Old Trafford and take on Man United well I think Chino Riedeval's injury which was a, a muscle strain is not a, it's not a, one of the normally when we get a muscle strain it's it's a grade three with tendon involved and it means people are out for months. We don't think that that will keep Jairo out for quite so long. We'll have had another week working with Michi and, and with Eber Echieze, which will also be of great advantage to us. And there's some talk about Christian Benteke coming back and joining us in the latter end of next week in training. But I think that will probably mean it will be too early for him to take part in the game. And Sacco, who's had one training session, which was on Friday, which wasn't a hard one because it's the day before a game, he'll be training with us for Monday, so he'll have a week's work behind him. Um, so it's gradually improving in that respect, but we're still going to have five or maybe six players unavailable and a further two or three who need more work and more game time. Thanks, Roy. Pleasure. OK, we'll go to Paul McGuinness at The Guardian. Hi, hi Roy. Um, just a quick one from me. Were you surprised at um, how assertive Southampton were in the game, throwing so many players into your half and leaving themselves open on the counter? No, I mean, I'm not so certain they actually did that. I think that we 
half expected we would get even more chances behind their back four as they, they push up because they like to pressurise the ball. I thought they dealt with it quite well. Um, I think most of their possession really was in front of us and we, we were prepared to concede that because we were more concerned about what they could do in the final third if they got the ball into their offensive midfield players and into their front players. So I'm, I'm happy with the way that we, we scotched that, that plan of theirs and made it difficult for them. But it meant we had to work very hard because we, we kept them in front of us and we kept them quite often playing backwards, but it meant that they still had the ball and we had to keep working. But I didn't think there was as many counter-attacking chances as I would have liked to have seen, and that's credit to them and their two back players for handling our two forwards in the way they did. Thanks, Roy. You're always happy Pleasure. to be corrected. Pleasure. No, you're not being corrected. No, 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 I'm not saying that. Uh, obviously, um, we hoped that we would do a little bit better on the counter-attack because we knew that the spaces were there. We didn't really find the passes as often as we would like and a lot were cut out because we didn't get enough loft on the ball. Um, so really and truly, although we did create a few chances, it wasn't as many as we really would have liked. But the good thing is they didn't create any mere, anywhere near as many chances as they would have liked either. So it was a, a very tactical game in that respect where good goal chances were very hard to find and were few and far between.